MG Rob back with you and today is part two of final assembly on the 1960 MGA restoration project. So today we'll be getting the passenger side, fender and door on and everything lined up. Let's go. Now we're going to end up jacking this thing up and putting it up on jack stands uh, because I still got to finish rubbing out the lower portions of the fenders and I still got to wet sand and buff out the rockers. But I want to get all the panels lined up first because this is the way the car is going to be sitting when you're driving it. And when you put it up on jack stands, you could end up introducing a slight twist, whatever, and it might not line up exactly the same. Now, of course, we're talking a very minimal amount. That would probably wouldn't make any difference. But I'd still rather go ahead and line all the body panels up now, sitting on all four wheels first. Then I'll put it up on jack stands. So once again, just like with the rear fender, I went and took the front one off line up my welting here and tape it in place and I'll mark all the holes. Now normally I wouldn't suggest doing one fender than the other um, because more than likely you're going to have to move things around if you didn't do the body work or whatever because there's nothing on the side of this car other than the rocker that's actually you know hard mounted unmovable so you got you can adjust the fen both fenders and the door which actually makes it quite difficult to build these cars when you're doing rockers and everything and make everything look good and look right you see a lot of cars where the door gaps or the stuff is just isn't right because um, you always have to do that it's always suggested do that before you take it off the chassis because once you take it off a chassis, it's way harder to put the rockers in later on. Um, and then, of course, in this case, we didn't take it off the chassis because he didn't want to take it that far. But in my case here, I know that I lined up the top exactly with that on the rear fender and the front exactly with this. So I know how it was aligned when I was doing the body work so I should be able to put it exactly in that same spot and be able to line up the door to the fenders and be all right and not have to move the fenders again but if you don't know that you very well end up you know trying to adjust the door the best you can and then moving either the front rear or both fenders to get everything actually sitting the way you want it So I started working the fender from here on down this way and I got into an area right here where it was in between two bolts that the flange just would not hold on to the welting. So I took the fender back off, reworked the flange a little bit because it was bent a little bit too much in near the bottom, flattened that back out, put it back on, started from here again working the way down we still got this area is not quite holding as well as I'd like it to. And with as wrinkled as this stuff was coming out of the package, that's as good as we're going to get it. And it, while it's no, not 100%, 100 point concourse quality, it's well within the range of what was expected for this car, just where it's supposed to be just a driver. Actually, the body work and paint is actually above the quality of what he was actually originally looking for. So uh, I just want to try to make this kind of in line with the quality of the rest of it. But I think that's about it right there. Now I can put the door on and try to get it all lined up. So now it's a good idea when you're going to hang the door to go ahead and put some of this blue painter's tape around the opening so that you don't chip the door or the fenders or the rocker in the process. Now when you're first bolting all this stuff on, 
and lining it up. You don't need all the bolts in there. So I just put two in and two until you get everything lined up because it makes it much easier. You're not, you're not messing with as many screws to adjust it. And if you end up needing to put packing in there to adjust the door gaps, it just makes it easier. Now in this case, I don't remember exactly whether I had um, any packings in there to get the door gaps correct or not, because I had put everything into one little container. There was the t tapping plates, all the bolts, any packings, everything that I might have had, and I've throughout the move I've never found them. So we're starting fresh with new tapping plates, all new screws, and then I'll um, put some shims in there if I need them. So yeah, we'll see how close we are here. So actually, that doesn't look half bad at all for just a first uh, first stab at it. Pretty close. All right, so I got the door, got the tape off so I could see the door gaps better and make sure of just how good it feels here. Um, and I'm really surprised at just how close it started out with just the hinges at what I thought was the median position. Didn't take hardly any adjustments whatsoever. Now my door gap in the very front is a little bit wider than the one in the back. Now I can't remember exactly how how it was when I did the body work. I think I had a little wider gap there than here um, because this gap here was pretty wide and this matches the rest of the door gap so it looks really consistent. If I pull this fender back to close this gap up, then this would look wide in comparison to this. And don't mind the fact that I have not buffed the top of the door yet. Sitting on the stands, I couldn't do the side very easily, so I was waiting until I get it bolted on. But I think we're going to leave the door gaps just like they are. Lock everything down. It looks like a really good happy medium with everything. And um, like I said, not 100% concourse, but never meant to be. So the next thing I would need to do on this side is actually start putting these closing panels in here. And now on this particular car, the basic rocker and work was done years ago by someone else. So this stuff doesn't line up quite as well as I'd like to see it to see it line up, but it's close enough to work. Um, but I don't have all the screws I need, so we're not going to do that today. Uh, so now all I got to do, move to the other side, just do the same thing to the other side. And then we'll be ready to put those panels in and latches and, and then, uh, then it can be put in the air on jack stands to finish buffing it out, put the front balance panel on and start all the other stuff. And for those who are wondering what's going on with the shop, I have been working, I started at the door here, I've been working across. Uh, it was like, I've been taking all of that uh, OSB down that was connected straight to the ballast or ballards then I've been taking all that down, putting in foam insulation here. Uh, I've been putting an inch and a quarter insulation in there because that's where it'll fit between the ballards and the two by four framing that I'm putting in there to bring it all out flush with the posts. And then I'm filling that two by four framing with more foam and then putting the OSB back on there. Now on this wall here, the top does not have any OSB, so I had to go buy more OSB to be able to fill all that in. And right now I have enough material to get myself down to the last post down here before you get to the parts room. So I am working on all that stuff, 
And as I get a section of this done, I'm going ahead and completely painting it so that once I move all my, because I had all of this stuff was over here while I was working on that. So I wanted to get it completely painted and even put baseboard down before I moved everything back over so that I wouldn't have to move it again to paint. So there's the walls completely done over here. So that's it for today's video. Now in part three, we'll be moving to the other side of the car, getting uh, all the fenders, door, and everything down on that side, get the latches put in, and start looking at the front balance panel and, and moving forward with everything else. So I know I don't ask very often anymore because I don't think it's a good idea too much, but I do want to remind you, if you like what I'm doing, like, subscribe, share with your friends. This is MG Rob. Later.